Hi, this is Steve. This is Bob. This is Jay. We are Alpha Quadrant 6, a science fiction review show. And in this episode, we're reviewing the recent movie, The Batman. Batman. Yeah, as if there haven't been enough Batman movies in the last 30 years. It is, you know, an incredibly popular uh, franchise, you know, both, you know, DC Comics and Batman specifically. I have to say, uh, we're going to give a brief spoiler-free review, and then we'll, go, we'll give you the alert before we go to the spoiler-laden version. I have to say, you know, going in, I'm like, really? Do we really need another Batman movie? I mean, how many different ways are we going to reimagine this character and his world and all of that? Um, but, I, but whatever, I, I, I like Batman. I went in with an open mind as much as possible. And I loved it. <laughs> yeah, I loved it. It, it. Actually, I have to say it's my favorite of all the Batman movies. It, I just think that they completely nailed it, and they fixed a lot of what I thought were, not, you know, weaknesses and or just dated aspects of the older Batman movies. Yeah, when you go back to the you know the first few Batman movies, if you watch them with a modern eye, I mean, there there is definitely a hokiness to it. That is way too much yeah. on the like 1970s Batman TV show. Yeah, you know? but I remember watching them and thinking, "Oh, this is really comic booky." Um, but at the time, comic book based movies were kind of a new thing, yeah, no, I, and we I were like, you. "That's cool. They're making a movie that's like a comic book." And so we, it was kind of a feature, not a bug, right? Yeah. But over the years, that feature has just become really dated. And you can't just keep doing that, right? You can't just keep making cartoony, comic booky movies. So I like the fact that's what one, that's like one of the things I like the most about this version, the Batman, was that they completely got away from that, and they said, let's just make a good, gritty film about this character yeah. and his world, and forget the comic book aspect right. angle to it. And so it's now I feel like Batman has fully matured out of the comic books into film. That's what this movie Definitely. did for me, and that's why I, one of the reasons. There are well, plenty why I loved it so yeah, much. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of good reasons. Although I would argue that Christian Bale kind of got away from he, he, the, the, he, uh, the comic book He was ninety percent of the way there, yeah. and you know he still had the voice and everything. But it, it, and this was just a better version of that. I and told, I, think I give I give you that yeah, for sure. The, the villains in. The Christian Bale Batman were still comic booky. I will I, not as not as much as oh, yeah. you know the, the yeah uh, the older right. the older ones. But I it, thought yeah. they nailed the villains in, in, in this, this one. Right. Yeah, they did, yeah, and it was fine at the time. But now when you watch this movie, I thought this movie did for Batman what the movie The Joker did for the Joker. Yes, right. totally. Right. My my point of view is I loved the things about it. That were not there. So, so first off, there is no origin story. Thank you, <laughs> thank you. Like, we like, didn't the, need like, it. like the modern Spider-Man when he debuted, he didn't give us. We didn't get an origin. That's fine. We've seen that enough. So, no origin story. That's wonderful. The other thing is, so, and this is early in his career. This is not later in his career because the other movies we see his origin, and then we see the mature Batman. This is no origin, and we we jump right in. This is a young two this years, adolescent two Batman. years, yeah. two years into into his Batman yeah. career. So that's great. There's also no Playboy facade. I mean, Bruce Wayne is n almost nowhere. This is He's almost, a recluse. Almost all Batman, all the time. And so that's another thing that 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 is different than pretty much all of the mm -hmm. other all the other ones. There's also the relationship with with Alfred. Yeah. I mean, they're antagonistic towards each other to a certain extent. They're not buddy buddy uh, at all, except maybe maybe towards the end. Well, that's because they're they're showing their high stakes relationship. Yeah. And they have yeah. a very complicated relationship. Right, and it's and it's going to evolve. And then the other thing that is probably my favorite thing that you see here that you don't see enough at all in in the other movies is. He is the greatest detective, and mm. they showcase that. This guy is brilliant. That's his superpower, right? That's, that's what yes. makes him, that's what puts him on the level of Superman, Wonder Woman, and all the He's others. Smart. His mind, yeah. and they showed it, and they showed it in here. And even Alfred had a little bit of a talent in yes. that regard yeah, as well. Yeah, without a doubt. But and, and Alfred taught him, taught him how to fight, right. taught him how to be a, you know, a child. Right. This was by far my favorite Batman. It's a very uh, clever and modern look at the the dark universe that yeah. batman lives in robert pattison did an amazing job yeah 
I, yeah, I, better I, than I thought. I mean, so I didn't think he was going to be able to do it. Like, I, he, yeah. he didn't just do it, but he, he nailed it. He made Batman feel almost in a good way, like scary and creepy. Like, when he, the way that he came on screen as this character, you felt the presence of, like, wow, there's a, there's a real oddity in the room yeah. here, you know? Like, usually, like, Batman is like, he, oh, he's the good guy. But he, you know, and he's a vigilante. I mean, come but on. The real Batman is a vigilante. Exactly. The cops don't aren't totally down with him, mm -hmm. especially in the early yeah. years. He's only got years. one on his side yeah. in the movie. And that relationship, by the way, was fantastic. Yes. You know, his relationship with Commissioner Gordon. With the Commissioner Not Gordon. Commissioner yet, which is you know, Officer right. Gordon, yeah. But I thought that was great too. So, you know, they're building, mm. they they put the foundation in for a, a few really good Batman yeah. movies here. Oh, Lot, man, lots yeah. of growth, lots of places for them to move forward with this. So I give, I'm giving this movie an A, an A, solid yeah, A. Solid oh, yeah, A, yep. solid A. All right, so now we're getting to the full of spoilers version review of the Batman. Um, so again, we all generally liked the vibe and the grittiness, I think the, the realness of it. Um, the, I, the you, know, you, you, you guys both alluded to the fact that there's an arc to the characters. You know, Batman himself starts out as like the most dark version of the Dark Knight, right? Mm -hmm. He is, he calls himself vengeance, mm -hmm. right? That's how, that's what yeah. he refers to himself. He is a full on vigilante. He says, you know, I don't hide in the shadows. I am the shadows. Yeah. You know, he's totally yeah. down. Like he is a creature of the night, you know, preying upon the, you know, the, the criminals of Gotham City. And, and he's he also said fear is a weapon. So it, he was- It's part of his- It is. Right, it's, it, it's yeah. toolbox. I love the idea, I do have to say though on that, I, the fear thing, because it, it makes the point that, you know, fear is not just, you know, it, he used, he's deliberately using fear as a weapon against the criminals. But I love this idea of like when the bat signal goes up, it's not just a signal to me. It's a, it's a warning to all the yeah, criminals. Yeah. And he says, "I can be, be afraid. I, I can't be everywhere, but they don't know that. Yeah, the, they I, don't know where I, I am. They don't know where I yeah. am." Yeah. All right. So there's a few things here right off the gate, right out of the gate, that they did so freaking well in yeah. this movie. One, the the way that uh, he he used his eyes. Mm -hmm. If you watch watch back in the beginning when you first see the character of, yeah. of Batman. His eyes are really creepy, and you and you get this sense from him that he could be very dangerous and not so much volatile, but just like a, you know, like an untapped keg. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> and I love that. <laughs> you know, it, so so right, you know, uh, coming from an actor who I wasn't sure could do this because it's a mature thing to do. This is a very mature role to play, yeah. and it's hard. It's hard to play Batman. I mean, you know, look at yeah. all even the, the, the everybody's it's hard so to play him not cheesy. Right, and even like you know. Past actors who've played Batman, they do the voice, and to me, the voice is always a big thing that takes me out of the movie. Like, why is he talking in that rough voice as Batman? I get like, don't do it. He did this perfectly. The, I there, didn't even notice. There was a separation between out. between him yeah. as as the rich guy and him as Batman, but it wasn't so dramatic and so silly. You know, there was something silly about the voice. Mm -hmm. the, uh, you you made a lot of good points, Bob. The the like drunken idiotic bachelor uh, fool that is you know the other half of Batman that all the other movies kind of portray right he has to like do such a divergence from who Batman is that they'd never think that he could be right. Batman they Good didn't kind. they didn't go there in this movie it, the real version of him is just a very sad dark individual yeah, a recluse yeah and he seems frail and you know he did mm. a good he does a good job of playing. You know, a recluse who, mm -hmm. who who couldn't possibly be Batman because the guy just doesn't yeah. have the power. Inside and you of wouldn't him. think of it just with the hair and everything. You just would never think that the Bruce Wayne was Bat. Was of course, the Batman. Yeah. So they, that's enough. You don't need to like be a buffoon, buffoonish, you know, playboy. Uh, then absolutely. now, Catwoman. Yeah. I, it scared me when I heard that Catwoman was in the movie because every single time yep. I've seen every someone time. play Catwoman, and, and you know who played her. Yes, Zoe Kravitz. Zoe Kravitz, who was just in the movie Kimmy that we, yeah, we which was so reviewed. good. She's, she's so she's good. Excellent. Yeah. She oh is God. fantastic. And, and this so, ties into Steve's point of like the cartoonishness, where there was not one hint of cartoonishness in her. Think mm -hmm. of the other Catwoman going all the way back. They all do all, the cat thing. All the way back to the, to the 1960s. It's think like they're on the, the stage the show. The flirty little cat thing. It's just so yeah. goofy. But like acting like a cat. Like is he is Batman acting like a bat? Like what are you talking about? It's so it's so goofy. Like you said, Bob. She she wasn't really like. Cat, playing Catwoman, she was playing more like a cat burglar. You yeah, know she I mean? was a cat yes, burglar, yeah, yeah, which yeah. I thought was a cool way to make her make sense. And and she 
And she likes cats. And But she also has a reason to be this character as well, which you need. You need to understand why, mm. why what people's motivations are. We totally have Batman's motivation. Just, you know, yeah, if you yeah. know anything about Batman, you know that his parents died. Yeah. That were murdered. And so, you know, I, I like that they gave you that. I like that there was, there was a little bit of a relationship happening, but Batman, it was a great setup because Batman mm. had to reject that. Because he isn't, he isn't Bruce Wayne, really. He really is Batman pretending yeah. to be a rich guy when he's Bruce Bruce Wayne. Yeah, I know who know who nailed that was the Riddler. Yes, the Riddler says, "You in the mask right now? That's the real you." And he was right. That's the nice. that arc of the character of Batman in this movie was the best part of it. It yep. was the fact that he starts out with, "I'm I am Shadow. I am Fear. I'm Vengeance." Right, and he learns you know throughout the movie that you know. You know, multiple times he's reminded that you know he's a vigilante, and you know the Riddler is really a vigilante too. In yeah. fact, the Riddler was right. Yeah. The Riddler <laughs> was correct in that although I mean he, he brutally murdered people, you know, civil servants, but they were all corrupt and lying. Yeah, and, and he, he was in a way doing a good thing for, he, for the for he, Gotham. He thought he and Batman were partners. Oh, man. And part of that was a little bit he was delusional, yeah. you know. But, but that's why he kept writing him those letters because yeah. he's like, hey, man, like he's trying to – he, he was saying you and I are the same and Batman realized, shit, he's right. Yeah. We are the same. You know, I'm not a psychopath, but, you know – Two clicks to the left. It's, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, we are two way closer than, than, we than I, I feel comfortable with. And same thing with like Catwoman. It was the same thing. Like there was – he was like trying to you know, be different from – just a thief or just a just a pure like psychopathic vigilante or just pure vengeance or pure fear and you know he and he, he evolves throughout the movie and realizes that the, his real impact is not through spreading fear it's through spreading hope. hope and then he becomes batman the first responder basically yeah which is another aspect of the batman character and I thought that was just brilliant yeah, the way he, I love you, that. We, we see the character evolve, just like his relationship with Alfred evolved. You know, at first yeah. he's like, you're not my father and that was whatever. Yeah. And then at the end he's realized like, yeah, you pretty much were my father, you know? Yeah, so hello. when you put your finger on the timeline in Batman, you yeah. know, they pick such a perfect place to start because, you know, we're not seeing him become Batman. He's already there, just like you said yeah. with Spider-Man. He's a baby Batman. But but there are major things that haven't cooked yet. Yeah, he's and, still sorting out what it means to be Batman. And that is so, because what better motivation? Now mm -hmm. we get to see him, you know, fully realize what it right. means to be Batman and go into like Batman's prime, because he's not in Batman's prime. No yet. way, I'm it's, so excited to see this evolution and, and to see him in his prime. It's, I can't wait. I can't, I want to watch the second movie right now. And yeah. I think it's, it's a, it, this is so popular. Oh yeah, it's ready to it's get a deal. Yeah, I yeah. can't they, wait for they're, more. They're definitely going to do it. Now there are other things that they did aesthetically that were fantastic. I love the I love the music, the whole aesthetic, the vibe. Well, you got to feel that Gotham was a got, was a real city. Yeah. Now right. his his vehicles and his suit. I want to talk about these two okay. things and the technology in general. Right. So Batman's that. Batcave was kind of a mess. You know, like he he isn't fully there. He hasn't turned his the Batcave into like an investigative mm. den with a lot of right, you know, right. tricked out technology. Yeah, he's got some computers and technology. Yeah, he's there. got he's tinkering. You could see that he's kind of tinkering. Yeah. His, you know, he the, he doesn't have all these ridiculous vehicles and super expensive things it's like bad he's, cop he's riding a motorcycle. <laughs> He's got a car that that's a way to get around. The car man. was pretty cool. The car was the Batmobile. It, it was, was the a Batmobile cool version of the Batmobile. But it was a pretty damn strict, you know, stripped down version. It wasn't it was like, electric. I think oh, it was. was it? Yeah. Was it? Um, I, read, I read it was electric. But he had the afterburner though. Yeah, I mean you gotta get a little him the rocket, afterburner. you know, a little rocket for I don't know, but I read it was no, electric. So they didn't hit us over the head again with special that. effects. There wasn't it wasn't about how that his car could drive up the side of a building and all that oh nonsense. My God, right? Oh my God. It, it, it was grounded in reality. Mm -hmm. And then we go to now we go to his costume. I always had a beef with every single Batman yep. costume. I always with, had a problem. With the nipples? With well, yeah, that was that was the little point. They look point. manufactured. They look, yeah, they looked yeah. like they were too perfect. Like, how are you manufacturing this without dozens of people knowing about it, right? Mm -hmm. In this movie, his costume looked like he very cleverly Found materials like Kevlar and whatnot. Looks homemade. Looks homemade though. But with high tech. Yeah, yeah. but he did a good job yeah. of doing it, but it kind of looks like almost, it's better, but kind of like Spider Man's first janky outfit. You know what I mean? That's the parallel there. Like, I thought, so they right. nailed that. And nailed if you it. noticed, he could. He could turn his head in that costume where previous Batman, some of them, could not turn their head. It was so 
tight and stiff I'm and you healed. couldn't turn your head. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing was, Steve and I talked about this a couple weeks ago, when he uh, jumped off the building. Yes. So yeah, the, so the technology again was realistic. What he's doing is super dangerous. You yeah. know, he, you know, first of all, I love the fact that when he gets to the, he's running away from the police. He gets to the top of the building, gets to the edge. He's like, whoa, he is scared. Yes, he almost fell off be. the edge. And so then he has to convert his costume into like the, the flying squirrel glider thing, right? <laughs> he, you know, and it, it like just barely works. You know, he was able, he was able to 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 slow his fall and. You know, to 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 fly down the street, but he was going really really fast. He, he hit did. something. He and pulled the chute. The chute got caught on an overhang. He causing him to bounce off the top of a bus and and you know fly down the street. He could have easily been he, killed. Yeah, he fell back the next day. So oh totally. So I think I like that. You know, just say, reminding us that again the stakes are high kind of thing. This isn't magic technology that yep. just magically works out. You know, this is he the experimental. Stuff that he's doing. That we're watching the primary character in, in the movie. It's dangerous. Super dangerous. In that moment, I had a little whoa, yeah. like whoa, you know, like like danger, which yeah. you normally don't because of plot armor. You usually don't worry plot about armor, your main yeah. character. But but right. even though I knew Batman wasn't going to die, I still were like whoa. You like, get, he could felt, get hurt. He could yeah. get effed up. Yeah. It, it felt it felt like a very very right. realistic thing to happen in that fantasy world. Yeah. Let's talk about the Riddler. The Riddler was amazing. Man. Loved, oh, loved man. the Riddler. Damn man! Everything because again, about he wasn't a cartoon. He wasn't a comic book. Um, he was a believable modern day vil villain vigilante. Right. First of all, he thought he was the good guy. He thought he was doing something right, which the best villains always think they're the good guys. Um, and again, he didn't have like this um, costume store costume. Right? Yeah, it, it was. was Clearly, it looked just, like he bought it out of an army survival. Uh, it was magazine, exactly. You know? It was a homemade. Um, I'm a nerd psychopath costume, right? Yep. Uh, and <laughs> you know how in, in classic Batman, the um, the villains all have their minions. Yeah. And they're like themed minions, and it's cr stupid. Yeah. You know, it comes off like so hokey. Yeah, like. it's so hokey. But they made that work. Oh, I can't believe they made that work because his minions were his uh, were following him online. And they were yes. just, they were just a bunch of psychopaths, and you know, and they and they, and wherever he bought his headpiece, they got, they got it. it too. They like, got it too. Made perfect sense. It was all homemade anyway, yeah. right? So it's just it's the kind of thing we they were cosplaying him basically. Uh -huh. It's completely doable. They were you know they were they were the you know the guns and conspiracy theory crowd that he gathered on his message and board. And it was a perfect know? it was a perfect group of crackpots. Yes, for today. Because we yes. because we know that those people are there, out there. Those people are out there, absolutely. Yeah. And if there was somebody like the Riddler, there would be people like that to follow him. Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 did, it felt real. And then when the Riddler, there's so many things to say about this yeah. character, but my favorite moment that that actor did, and he did it brilliantly, was when he realized when he was talking to Batman that Batman didn't fall for it. Yeah. Like Batman didn't agree with him. Yeah. And, and all of he his plans. Meltdown. Yeah. Yeah. His plan His meltdown was epic. Blew up right in front of him, yeah. and the way that that character, yeah. that actor, played that was so good because he was acting like a child. Yes, he was having a temper tantrum yeah. because. You know, Batman didn't do what he thought he did. He had this romance in his head about yeah, the sure. two of them working together. And when Batman rejected him, and that was a key turning point in the movie, because like you said, Batman was like, whoa, I am not you, dude. I am not that. That was big. It also, you know, I'm thinking in the future, like the Riddler now really hates the Batman. Yeah. Really oh, hates he has him. Oh, he has a perfect reason to yeah, hate him. And yeah. then, of course, we've got to bring this up, guys. No, we don't. The Joker? Yeah, I mean, this is the spoiler part of the, this is yeah. the, the, I loved how they teased the Joker. The Joker is already incarcerated. You know, I just felt like, to me, that was, that was the Easter egg. Yeah. There is way more to come here. This story yeah, yeah. is just oh, Of course, they, that, that was the teasing the next movie. All right, I have to ask you guys if you had the same reaction I did. Yes. Early on oh, in the wait. movie, mm -hmm. early on in the movie, when Batman makes his first appearance, you know, as a vigilante, you have the gang. It's, it's a Joker gang, yeah, right? Yeah. Attacking that guy in the subway, but it's basically a gang of people with the white face makeup on. Yeah. I totally had a City of Heroes flashback. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. It's, like, it's a gang of skulls. The skulls. And yeah. They, <laughs> anyway, if you don't know what the game City of Heroes is, a, a video game that came out when late 90s, late nineties, early two thousand. Around two thousand, yeah. And uh, 
it's a really wonderful game that you could you could still play it today. And they're the That's villains fine. in this movie totally look like the skulls. Yeah, so because yeah, because you're playing a hero, there has to be a lot of bad guys roaming the streets for you to attack. So like, there's these roving gangs of people, and one of the gangs is that the skulls. They have this white makeup on that looks very reminiscent of. I, I wouldn't be of, surprised if somebody. It had that vibe. It, like, totally it wouldn't that surprise vibe. me if they like that was a deliberate, you know, little yeah. uh, Easter egg, you know. All right, guys, we are telling you go see this movie. We don't say this that that often. This One warning, it's long. It is long. I didn't feel like it was too long, but you have to be ready for a long movie. One of the things I liked about it, because I get a little annoyed with the what I call the short attention span theater, where everything is boom, bang, bang, in your face, yeah, one after the time. other. Like they're trying to keep you your adrenaline high and on the edge of the seat. You see it all the time. This movie was not afraid to just have a long, slow, slow scene yeah. where they are luxuriating in how terrible Gotham is or how dark a, move, a moment was or the intensity of a relationship. And then that really contrasted well with the more action-packed sequences. Yeah. But it wasn't just like gratuitous action after action. But that's why I loved it. I know, it was great. It, it, it's why, but that makes for a really long movie, but it was fine. I loved it. So, you know, in previous Batman movies, when they want to show that Batman's a detective, like he's on his computer and he's hooking into everybody's cell phone, he's doing all this techno stuff. In this movie, they took the time for him to walk around a crime scene. Yeah, and, and notice stuff. And yeah. notice stuff. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. and I loved I loved how Gordon noticed him noticing stuff. You know, like yeah. they, they took these time to, to put these little nuances in there that give that give you the idea, Bob, that he is a master detec detective, yes. which mm. does make Batman really Batman. Yeah. Because as we know, you guys should know this, Batman, because he had enough time, defeated Superman. Yeah. yeah, he was able to take him down, right? The only way to do that is being a, a genius and a mastermind yeah. and all that. So they they really landed that hard. And God, and it's just the beginning. Like mm. think about what we'll get in the next few movies. So yeah. I really am amped for this, guys. Please go see it. Well, guys, if you enjoyed this episode, you can see more of our episodes at Alpha Quadrant and the Number Six dot com. And we will see you all next week. Yeah.